Madam Web is a comic book movie about a woman with the ability to see into the future. So in this movie, we follow Cassie Webb, played by Dakota Johnson. She is an EMT living in New York City, and one day she has a near-death experience, which for some reason sparks her ability to see into the future. I don't believe it was ever explained why this was the cause, but she starts having visions of things mere seconds to minutes before they happen. She sees that this evil spider guy named Ezekiel, played by Tahar Rahim, is attempting to kill these three teenage girls, leading Cassie to take them under her super Supervision. There's a lot wrong with this movie, but I think I'll start there. Ezekiel is after these three girls, and conveniently, they all get onto the same subway car along with Cassie. This was never explained other than just by saying that they're all part of Cassie's web, which is a really lazy excuse. It was like an episode of Arrested Development where the Bluths all humorously show up at the same place by the end of the episode. And Cassie's obsession with protecting these girls herself at first seems pretty senseless. They at least could have thrown a line in there like, oh, I'm just an EMT, helping people is what I do. My first thought when she drives off of them was, why doesn't she just take them to the police? Because at this point in the story, I couldn't think of a single logical reason not to. There's a good reason not to that we learn about later, but at this point, Cassie didn't know about that, so why would she take them into the middle of the woods, making her look like a kidnapper? And better yet, why would they go with her? As far as the kids can tell, Ezekiel could just be after Cassie and not them. But they're pretty quick to believe Cassie and trust that she can see into the future with basically no solid proof at all. Do I even need to ask if any of you would believe a stranger under such circumstances? Even if there's an evil spider guy who's really quick at changing his clothes that is crawling on the ceiling that she's telling me to run from, I'm not just gonna believe that she's an oracle. So the worst thing about this movie is the dialogue. From extremely expositional dialogue to bad jokes that don't land, to people saying things that don't make any sense at all, the dialogue was just awful. Throughout the first act, characters are constantly saying very expositional things that no human being would ever say. For an example, the movie starts off with Cassie's mom researching spiders with Ezekiel, and even though it's very clear that that's what they're doing, they felt the need to establish that through dialogue, so the characters literally reiterate to each other that they're looking for a spider, as if they had never talked about it prior and didn't literally travel there to do that thing. There's just a lot of dialogue like this where characters are communicating things to each other, just for the sake of us learning about them as if we couldn't just figure that out by watching. This does feel like a good time for me to clarify that this god-awful line from the trailer. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. So I will say that that line isn't actually in the movie, but there's still plenty of bad dialogue in its absence. At one point, Ezekiel is talking to someone and he says something along the lines of, I will find them. I came from nothing. Okay, I mean, where you came from doesn't pertain to this conversation at all or add any value to it, but by the way, he doesn't say anything else about where he came from. That's actually it. That one out of place line is what the writers decided was an adequate amount of character depth. It kind of felt like that one line from The Witcher. I am Talk, the Sylvan, a rare and intelligent creature. I think in the same vein of this dialogue, I'll start introducing myself at cocktail parties like this. Oh, hey, I'm Josh, a young and witty movie reviewer from the East Coast. Yeah, like real smooth Josh from the East Coast. So the humor in this movie mostly comes from the three teenagers, Julia, Maddie, and Anya. I did not personally find their banter funny at all, but humor is extremely subjective. I did, however, find their banter to be very cliche. If you've ever watched a teen drama before, their dynamics and backstories will be very unoriginal. Julia is played by Sydney Sweeney, who seemingly everyone and their mother is just obsessed with. Like every time this movie has come up in conversations that I've had in the past couple of weeks, somebody was like, oh, but you know, uh, Sydney Sweeney's in that movie, uh huh? In case you were thinking about seeing this movie just so you can gush over her, I should clarify that her character is actually an underage teenager and is well depicted as such. So unless you are also a teenager, perhaps contain yourself. As far as the rest of the cast goes, I thought that the other two kids were fine. It's really our two leads that I thought were horribly casted. Casting choices can really make or break a character. And as much as I want to root for actors' redemptions and would like for Dakota Johnson to redeem herself after Fifty Shades, I cannot defend her in this movie. I do want to acknowledge that a lot of people tend to wrongfully blame actors for movies being bad when often it's just the dialogue written and not necessarily their performance. But in this case, I firmly believe that it's actually both. As I've mentioned, the dialogue is bad, but so was her portrayal of the character. I kind of just felt like she was wrong for this role. Tahir Rahim also felt totally wrong. He just didn't feel intimidating at all, despite his very cringy, scratchy voice that he uses to try and sound scary. Continuing down the path of crimes against cinema committed here, the editing and cinematography, despite being pretty fine for a good chunk of the movie, 
was occasionally just total garbage. The action scenes often had too many cuts in them, and they were obviously to cover up the bad renders of Ezekiel jumping around that you get really short glimpses of before they cut. And there were some absolutely cringy shots in the climax of the film because of how poorly framed they were in addition to the just awkward flow of the edit. There was also a serious overuse of Dutch angles where the camera is slightly tilted to add intensity to a shot. This is getting to be a pretty dated camera technique, so it's one that should be used very sparingly, if at all. But there were just so many of them and they were occasionally used at times that felt really awkward. Like there's this one god awful pillow talk scene with Ezekiel. He was really oversharing with this girl that he had hooked up with about how every night he has clairvoyant visions of his own death. By the way, somehow this movie did that trope even worse than Revenge of the Sith. You know how Anakin is having visions of Padme dying? At least that was kind of ironic because it ended up being a future that he caused. Here, it had like no payoff. There really could have been a better explanation for how the foresight superpowers work, especially in Cassie's case. Perhaps it was just me, but it feels like we were missing some very important details because in the end, they pulled a straight up do sex machina with their powers and it was dumb. Maybe set that up a little better instead of setting the stage for the movie with these very on the nose foreshadows like cracking open fortune cookies over lunch or watching Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol when it's not even Christmas time in the movie. There are so many job titles you could blame for the butchering of this movie. You could blame the actors, the DP, the screenwriters, the studio, the director, because it was all a collective misfire. Overall, this movie was a laughable disaster. It was just terrible. I promise you I went into this movie with an open mind, but I just can't say anything to defend it. Normally, this is the part where I talk about who the movie is for, regardless of its quality, but I really don't think anyone should see this, unless of course you're in the mood for a cringe watch that you can laugh at. Even those of you keeping up with these Spider-Verse movies for any contributions they might have to the greater universe. There is nothing here. It's just really upsetting because I love comics, but I also grew up on shows like the Spider-Man animated series. And when you have this long-term familiarity with these characters, it's so incredibly exciting when you find out they're being brought to the big screen. So when they end up being this bad, it's just so much more upsetting. Going from the Venom movies to Morbius to this, which is arguably the worst of the bunch, my faith in Sony's live action Spider-Verse is officially gone. I really hope that the lack of a post credit scene in this movie is a sign that Sony is taking a step back to reassess what they need to do to make better films because what they're making right now is just an insult to Spider-Man fans. Thank you for watching this review. If it brought you any value at all, please consider giving it a like. It really does help the channel grow. I'll see you later this week with my reviews of Bob Marley One Love and The Taste of Things.